We are living in an era of internet anonymity and online personas. And as a result, authenticity has become very rare and even more precious. Our virtual world offers us unprecedented freedom to shape our myco identities. Yet this freedom often comes at a cost. As we all navigate social media platforms, forums, and other online spaces, you know, the temptation to present an idealized version of ourselves, it can be overwhelming. But what does this mean for our health and our wellness, particularly our mental health? Being an authentic human being is the foundation of genuine human connection. When we're true to ourselves, we create bonds based on trust and mutual understanding. However, in this digital realm, the anonymity that shields us can also distance us from our true selves. Studies have shown that maintaining an inauthentic online persona can lead to feelings of disconnection and isolation. So when we present a facade to the world, we may find ourselves trapped in a cycle of comparison and inadequacy, constantly measuring ourselves against the curated lives of others. This disconnection is particularly detrimental to our mental health. Research indicates that individuals who struggle with authenticity are more likely to experience anxiety, depression, and low self-esteem. The pressure to conform to societal expectations and the fear of judgment can prevent us from seeking the help we need. In a world where likes and follows are often the measure of our self-worth, it's easy to forget that our true value lies within. To cultivate our authenticity, we must embrace vulnerability. This means acknowledging our imperfections and accepting that it's okay to not have everything figured out. It also means being honest with ourselves and others about our struggles and seeking support when we need it. The pursuit of health and wellness is deeply intertwined with our ability to be authentic. When we're true to ourselves, we're better equipped to recognize our needs and take proactive steps towards fulfilling them. One thing I'm slowly learning as a father of three is that authenticity fosters resilience. By embracing our true selves, we build a solid foundation of self-worth that's not easily shaken by external circumstances. This resilience is crucial in maintaining mental health because it empowers us to navigate life's challenges, hopefully with confidence and grace. In this digital age where anonymity and online personas can easily lead us astray, it's more important than ever to strive for authenticity. And tonight's guest reminded me about this. Her story is rooted in her centeredness, her genuine internal drive to improve her life through reconnecting with nature. And in doing so, she found herself wanting to share her experiences of connection with nature with the rest of us. Her TikTok and Instagram channels are thriving because in this era of inauthenticity, she is a glimpse into what being oneself is all about. Tonight, we're going to get to know Savannah Schwartz of Foraging Kentucky. You're listening to the Michael Geeky Podcast. A podcast that inspires people to grow mushrooms at home to improve their mental, emotional, and physical health. Most people call him geeky, and he is a passionate mushroom cultivator, advocate, and educator. Every week, he sits down with fellow cultivators, mushroom educators, scientists, and therapists to discuss the various ways people can approach mushroom cultivation and how mushrooms can be used to improve their lives. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Myco Geeky Podcast, the podcast that goes deep so you can level up your at-home mushroom cultivation game. I'm your host, Myco Geeky, and I'm excited to be with you tonight. We got a great show, Savannah Schwartz, super cool. Um, not lying, uh, uh, she... Um, her story was a little bit different. It, it, it hit a little different and uh, inspired me to really think a lot about all that stuff. Uh, think about in this era of market saturation, myco saturation, everybody wants to vend, everybody's stepping on everybody else's toes, everybody's piece of the pie getting smaller. Um, the answer is authenticity. Why are you here? Why do you care? Like, do you really like mushrooms? Great. And keep liking mushrooms. If you really need to vend, if mushrooms needs to be how you make money, just figure out how to do it authentically. Um, do something for the community. Stop thinking what you can get out of the community. Think about what you can give to the community. You know, what, right? JFK. It's not what you can, you know what I'm saying. Anyway, I'll step off my soapbox. A uh, quick shout out to Stealthy Spores. Uh, 
got to hang out with him in uh, Mexico, super cool guy, just decided to actually execute on this uh, collector card idea. Uh, it's very cool. It's a game. It works. We played it in Mexico. Had a lot of fun. Uh, everybody had a good time. It isn't. It's not an easy game. You got to sit down and figure it out. Um, but, you know, he's doing cool stuff for the community. Remembrances, right? Uh, Dirty South Maiko, Eternal Hero card. Every once in a while, definitely gets me a little emotional. Um, it's just a great way to remember and, uh, you know, kind of just galvanize a little souvenirs, little memories. You know, this is cool. Uh, when it, when I first saw this, when I held it in my hand, I was like, wow, my, my, that's cool, man. Am I, I made a difference for somebody enough to, to get one of these. This is great. I would hope everybody who wants to vend, who wants to, um, you know, do more than just do a couple shoe boxes in the basement. Um, if you, if you've switched that mode to think about how you can be a part of the community, uh, in a giving way. Yeah, man, you should aspire to want to <clears throat> ha have one of those cards. You should aspire to want to be on the show. I get people, man, it's really cool. I get people message me so excited because they just did their first grow uh, or their second or third grow. And it's starting to feel good. It's starting to feel like they got it. And they send me these huge messages chronicling all the details of their grows and which episode helped them figure out which thing and, and all that kind of stuff. And then, uh, and a lot of them will say, and you know, maybe one day I get to be on the show. Yeah, guys, one day you will get to be on the show. Keep doing stuff. Keep, you know, thinking about how you can be a part of the community in, in, a, in a selfless way, not a selfish way. Um, that's what I'm all about. That's what I want to nurture, inspire, foster people to do. Um, and that's what we're trying to do. Ohio mushroom dna lab is definitely doing that he's doing sequencing for everybody it's a lot of work uh it, it, it's a, a complicated process um but he's stepping up to the plate and then that inspired other people to step up to the plate and help him out he's got a whole team now they go on trips they're doing all sorts of stuff it's really cool um if you want to meet him he's going to be at the ohio mushroom festival that's september 12th through the 15th and um I think it's second weekend of September coming up real quick. Um, also, Jessica Williams is going to be there giving a presentation on behalf of OMDL about DNA sequencing. So you guys are going to get to learn about DNA sequencing. You're going to get to learn about what OMDL is all about, what they're doing, why what they're doing matters. And then there are countless other presenters. Uh, as we lead up towards the Ohio Mushroom Festival, I'll be kind of showcasing, talking about some of those people. But yeah, if you're within, I don't know, three, four, five hour drive, Think about coming out. It's a good time. It's a real good time. A lot of cool people. Everybody's going to be there. Um, second annual festival. It's got a killer lineup. It just worked out. It's it's a cool place. Ohio, you know, we got a few things going on. Anyway. OMDL. Repping the hat. Repping the shirt. If you guys want to support them, you can do the same thing. Um, just reach out to Kyle on Facebook. He'll get you all taken care of. Anyway, so on to our guest. She, uh, as you'll you'll find out, she is uh, much like a lot of us, got into this community uh, as an island of her own. She uh, sort of operated up until very recently, uh, pretty independently, and uh, it's it was really fascinating to get to know her her journey, her solo journey into the depth of mycology. All right, welcome to the show, Savannah Schwartz. What's up? Hey, not much. How are you doing? Uh, I'm just hanging out in my basement. I got the laundry going. I'm waiting for a giant blanket to dry. My kids are taking their showers, and, you know, I'm just uh, living that dad life tonight. But nice. <laughs> more importantly, here we are. I've been following you on Instagram. Uh, you just got fun, light, not heavy, not dense but really digestible content. And I, I just kept watching it and I'm like, oh, she's sticking around. She, this wasn't like something she's going to do one weekend and then disappear. So I, I, I reached out. I said, come on the show, please. And thank you. And here we are. Yeah, thanks for having me on. I try my best to stay consistent. It's a little difficult getting videos out. I try to go for at least three a week. Uh, stuff happens sometimes, but. I'm impressed. <laughs> three a week is a lot. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm doing one podcast a week and every once in a while I can't quite pull that off but yeah consistency is hard 
Mm -hmm. It's not easy. So before we get into all the content and all that stuff, um, I, I usually do with everybody. This is my, this is a personal thing. I love asking everybody their absolute first mushroom memory. Go as far back as you can. What is the first memory of a mushroom that you have? Yeah. Um, oh, gosh. So I I really just remember, like, as a kid, just seeing them around the yard, and I never really thought anything of it. The first most recent memory of getting back into mushrooms, I found a hexagonal poured polypore, and that was the first mushroom I found, and I ate it. And luckily, I had identified it correctly because I was very overly ambitious and jumped right into it. You went um, for it. Oh, yeah. So that was the most recent kind of concrete memory other than just kind of seeing them around the yard as a kid but well, they tasted a lot like potato chips i haven't had really ones. yeah they were now how did you prepare them i have never crunchy. wanted to eat them yeah they're they no. i just felt like they'd be too hard i just kind of sauteed them and they got very very crispy very crunchy it was a very young and thin ones so when in doubt <laughs> cook it out yes <laughs> cook it well mm -hmm. for sure all right. Well, that's cool. I mean, I thought you were going to say my earliest mushroom memory was I found a mushroom and like me, you had the urge to throw it against a tree for some unknown reason, but okay. You were nice to mushrooms. I like that. Mm -hmm. I never, about, I never really gave them a second thought until my adult life as a kid. I just saw them and eh, whatever. So, so how about, so, so go back, just let, let's, so people know who you are. Um, you're not an old man like me. You're younger. You're 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 definitely more savvy with the internet than me. You know, you're on the TikTok. You also probably don't call it the TikTok. Um, <laughs> talk to me about just who you are. Forget about the the content creator for now. Just who who are you as a person? Uh, not every little detail, but like as it pertains to what you are doing with your content. Yeah. So I grew up here in Kentucky. I lived in the same house my whole life growing up. And then I moved down to central Kentucky. So right now I'm in northern Kentucky. I came back up, grew up in northern Kentucky, moved down to central Kentucky for a few years. I got my degree at Eastern Kentucky University, studied marketing. I actually started out in music theory and composition. Mm, okay. And then I was in school when COVID happened. And it kind of took away all of our resources for learning music. So that kind of pushed me to switch to marketing. And then after I graduated, I moved back up here, lived with my parents for a little bit while I got situated and found a job. And then me and my husband bought our house last October. So we're coming up on a year of being here. It's been really great. We've got a couple acres. I'm doing a lot of gardening, gardening, real gardening, not like the TikTok gardening. Right. Um, I, I planted 40 native fruit trees. So far, wow. I've got a little orchard. Uh, so that's been really fun. I've wanted an orchard my whole life. And now, do you want an orchard? Native. Do you want an orchard like me? I want an orchard less for the apples, more for the potential of morels. Or do you <laughs> actually want the orchard? I don't have any apples. I have okay. elderberries, uh, choke cherries. Oh, yeah. I'm going to get some pop outs here soon. I'm going to go dig some up. Uh, don't have them yet. Elderberries, choke cherries, uh, sumac, oh, which okay. is native here in Kentucky. Uh, it, it grows very aggressively. So, well, be careful if you do a post sumac. One. Yeah, if you do a sumac post on the internet, you're going to have people telling you where it's really from. Oh yeah. my gosh. That yeah, be careful. I was, I was yeah. teetering on turning off the comments on that one. Um, yeah, that's crazy. It is native in Kentucky. Yes. It is yeah. not from Iran, the one we have here. There's yeah. a lot of debate. Oh, boy. <laughs> it was cool, though. You got to learn about the Iranian connection to sumac. Mm -hmm. That was I, I did appreciate it's that. It did get a little heavy, species. though. Yeah. Yeah, it was. And then a lot of people were getting kind of feisty about how I pronounced it, which, I mean, I pronounce it oh. how I know it. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> yeah, I do my best. Um, the police, mm -hmm. the police, but, they show up on the internet. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's cool. So you do I real gardening. Can. Yes. You got a couple acres. Now, I used to live in Cincinnati for a while, and, nice. and I did some work down in Florence. Mm -hmm. or, 
that's pretty northern, right? Like, I mean, it's right across the river. I don't know if it gets more northern than that. Yeah, yeah my husband but, but it's... in Florence. You know, oh, he does. Okay. A pretty good commute. We're kind of in like the southeastern tip of northern yeah. Kentucky. But so it's beautiful. We go about 45 minutes away. Yeah, it is a great area. And I realized as soon as I moved away that I wanted to come back. Yeah. Nice. You know, All right, so you tried it. Central KY. Nope, you were like, get me back. Yeah. Get me by the river. Look where you've got the perfect mix of urban and rural. So down where we are, it's like I've got my neighbors is a farm, a farm, and a farm. <laughs> so it's very secluded, perfect. great little area here. But then it's only like an hour, 45-minute drive to actually have some stuff to do. If you want to get out in the city, which I don't very often, nice. but it's there. If I yeah, to. it is nice to be city adjacent. Mm-hmm. We do, we don't go to Cleveland often, but boy, when we, we when we just want a little more excitement from our rural mm-hmm. lives, we can sneak up there. It it, it yeah. is nice to be close to that stuff. All right, so marketing. Interesting. Yeah. I've had somebody else on the show who was killing content, and they also had a background in marketing. So I, whatever you learn in marketing definitely informs i i i think Mm -hmm. how how you create content because you're definitely doing an exceptionally good job thank you of creating simple seemingly effortless content that uh i know you put a lot of thought into Mm -hmm. you you you, you're you're definitely recording a lot of stuff and putting together some great content what which we'll get into in a little bit here um so why all of a sudden, you you get married, you buy a house, you start doing some gardening. How do you make the leap from just that living that simple life to, but also, let's become a content creator? Mm-hmm. I've been posting videos on TikTok for a lot longer than I was posting on Instagram. My Instagram okay. took off a lot quicker than TikTok did, for sure. Uh While I was in school, I was also working full time through school so I could pay for my tuition, not have any loans, which I'm very thankful for. And I was putting out just like very raw footage, very low effort. So once I graduated, I had more free time. I started focusing more and just wanted to make videos that not just I thought was cool, but was also watchable. (laughs) Uh, It's interesting. So, like, what were those early TikTok videos? Like, just, I went to a concert and here's a little clip of it, or, or like, what are we talking about? A lot of the first ones was, I posted, like, 10 in a row of me just picking chanterelles with music playing oh, okay. in the background, and it's just, like, chanterelle, chanterelle, chanterelle. All right, so you um, were, you were still, like, you wanted to show the mushies off a little bit. You were, okay. Yeah. All right. So, so let's get into that, then. What? how how did you and mushrooms become friends as a young adult so i i had a similar background you mentioned uh growing up in the woods i had a very similar upbringing i had a good baseline foundation of knowledge just what's out there in my area and then i kind of got away from it in middle school and high school got more into sports and boys and makeup and all you know teenage stuff. Uh, yeah makeup it's a phase for all of us yeah. i understand <laughs> and then once i got, uh, went away to college i got really homesick and i got really broke and i was trying to think of like okay what can i do that's free that's around me um and i started diving back into foraging uh getting back into nature at eku they have a really great little trail on campus so i go there a lot and just be out in nature more uh great free entertainment and i never really been interested in the mushrooms before up until that point Mm. but i started noticing them more just being out in nature more and it just kind of piqued my interest i like eating mushrooms and i you know it was doing a little bit of foraging already i grew up doing some foraging and i knew that that was something that people forged for, but I had no experience with it. So I just started kind of doing some research. The National Audubon mm-hmm. Mushrooms of North America was kind of my guide. And yeah, I just, I really dove head first and I was kind of reckless. <laughs> like found that first uh, hex- hexagonal pulled polypore and ate it, you know, after 10 minutes of research. After that, I 
definitely slowed it down off a little bit more yeah. um <laughs> that's a i don't know how many people are gonna name that as their first the first it's one not. they ate that is yeah. pretty odd <laughs> i like it i like it um but but you just you went for it i mm -hmm. like that it's i i think there's a lot of we live in a society now where we see all these famous people being amazing at whatever they do. And then you're like, well, I like that, but I'll never be LeBron James. So why bother play basketball? Or I'll never be this guy. So why do it? But you were like, no, I'm going to just go find a mushroom and eat it. And, and 10 minutes of research later and you didn't die. That's yeah. great. Yes. Yeah, that there's something thing. to be said for just doing it. <laughs> just doing it. Like if yeah. it's your, if it's interesting, do it. Yes, mm -hmm. please. It was definitely a barrier getting, not getting into foraging so much as just posting the content, uh, kind of getting over what are people going to think. And I kind of hid behind the camera for the beginning part and just, you know, took videos of mushrooms and I was comfortable with that. But once I was like, okay, I think I'm going to try to start building a following. Uh, I enjoy what I'm doing. I really want to. Uh, share this information with more people that's when I started to kind of become a presence and show my face more in the videos and that is when I started seeing a lot more success on my pages yeah people want a face mm -hmm. yeah I, I had the same situation I, I I had said I want to do this podcast I want to do like a little talk show for people who like mushrooms who like growing mushrooms my initial problem was well we grow mushrooms that are not legal in most places where I'm only doing it for myself but but it was still a risk. But people want to see who they're talking to, or they want to see yeah. who they're listening to, and they just want to follow a human being. So mm -hmm. yeah, I, I'm I'm not surprised that you saw exponential growth at that point, because then you're just you, it's scary to put yourself out there, but it's it's definitely the right move. Mm -hmm. So now, so you, you, this is really fascinating to me because you sort of are like your own island right like you didn't have a group of friends who liked mushrooms and you wanted to be cool and this was truly sure inspired by being broken wanting to entertain yourself or, or for you know being homesick yeah I was... but this was intrinsically driven is oh, yeah. kind of the vibe i'm getting yeah i was sitting on my couch in my little teeny tiny apartment it was terrible <laughs> And I was like, what can I do that's free? And also I was getting super out of shape and just laying around. Like I was like, I, I can't afford to go do anything. Yeah. What do I do? And I was like, well, I'm food motivated and I need to get out and do something. I love nature growing up. I think this is what I'm going to have to do. Get my life together and <laughs> working out. I me. like it. Yeah. And boy, oh boy, for <laughs> anybody who has not eaten a foraged mushroom, I mean, mm -hmm. The store bought mushrooms are just sad, pathetic. I mean, Absolutely. I still eat them, but but mm -hmm. nothing compares. Absolutely, nothing compares. Even even the worst forage mushroom pretty much tastes better than mm -hmm. anything you buy at the store. So yeah. um, so let's get into. So I I know your first out of the gate, you know, edible mushroom experience here, hexagonal pore polypore. Okay, very unique. No yeah. one's ever going to tell me that. <laughs> walk me through sort of so you're saying you're food motivated right and, mm -hmm. and I, i'm with you there i love food but also i love finding food yes. like if i could walk around the woods and find a really cool cheeseburger i would also <laughs> do that that would be great but we we find other things um talk to me about that um, so some of the, the, the early edible mushroom experiences you had, but then also talk to me about that there's something, I, I mean, I'm, I'm going to tell you how I feel. Something just feels right about running around the woods looking for food. I yeah. don't know. Maybe our ancestors did it. I don't know. But um, yeah, it, it feels good to do that. And oh my God, like forget Pokemon Go. When you find a mushroom right it's, yeah it's oh man like, you gotta catch them all yeah, i gotta uh, get so them fun. all yeah it's like easter every day yeah 
well, if it's been raining. <laughs> oh. No it, Easter it lately, raining. I know. <laughs> yeah. It's been rough. I'm supposed to get a lot of rain starting tomorrow and this weekend. Yep. So I'm Same. excited. Uh, but really, I, I've always been like a collector. I've found these like little things that I collect. And this is kind of in that vein of, you know, collecting things. I mentioned I had that National Audubon book. And every time I would find one, I had these little mushroom stickers and I would, you know, put oh. that sticker on that page in the book and like write little notes about where I found it and um, if I ate it or not and what it tasted like. So I kind of like built up my collection in that. After the first couple of years, I stopped doing it because there got to be so many that I just couldn't keep up with it. Um, yeah. But that was a good way to get started and to kind of encourage myself to learn about what I was finding. All right, so that first one, you just went for it for eating. Was there a point where you're like, okay, hold on. I, I could screw this up real bad mm -hmm. and, and get a little more cautious. Did you ever have like a, a regrettable eating decision? You know, I, I, I want to hear the, the GI upset of it all. I never had a experience where I was ill um, after that wow. first one the next one I tried I also thought was a hexagonal pore polypore but it was an old pheasant back mm. <laughs> and if you've ever eaten an old pheasant back it's like chewing on a shoe so I was like I don't eat old pheasant backs no <laughs> yeah. so that kind of uh, made me learn some common sense luckily not the hard way but then the next like event that really kind of scared me a little bit it was when i was a lot more comfortable i had forged some enoki mm -hmm. and oyster mushrooms and i was 100 percent confident in my identification and i cooked them up and i made a mushroom gravy and uh me and my family had it so i was like cooking for other people with mushrooms at that point so bold confident. move bold move. yeah yes. <laughs> but then that night when i went to sleep i had this dream that it wasn't Enoki, it was Deadly Gallerina, and I killed my whole family. Oh, <laughs> so that, that's a that's like, called a nightmare. That oh, is yeah. not a dream. Oh, yeah. yeah, it terrified me. Even though I knew like 100% it was Enoki, like I was I was shaking and I didn't yeah. sleep for uh, the rest of the night and it was just like kept me up. And I was like extra, extra cautious after that, even though I was 100% wow. sure of my identification. There's no chance it was deadly gallerina. That really shook me up. So I've been extremely cautious since then. I was I mean, definitely way too reckless in the beginning. But that's also, I don't know, maybe I'm weird. <laughs> that makes it a little more exciting for me. <laughs> like that I am taking that risk. Mm -hmm. So it's a hobby where I'm testing my intelligence with my life. Yeah. Which... I don't know. Maybe it's the ADHD in me, but I I don't hate that. And to be, I mean, you you know this, right? The the really deadly ones. Luckily, you as long as you pay a little bit of attention, in most cases, you're you you can ID them pretty readily. Yeah. So it's not, yeah, not too it's, dangerous. It's, especially with mushroom plants, are definitely a little bit scarier when it comes to the oh, toxic yeah. lookalikes than mushrooms for sure. Um, but mushrooms are pretty safe oh, yeah. as long as you have, a, and most of the ones that are poisonous are just going to make you miserable for a yeah. couple of days. There's very few that'll actually take you out. Take you out. Take you straight out. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> but they're there and they're beautiful. Oh, yeah. I mean, I love, I mean, Gallerina marginata is a gorgeous mushroom. I, mm -hmm. when I find them in, you know, bountiful supply on a log, I'm, mesmerized by them they're so cool mm -hmm. right but, they're really but pretty luckily i don't eat them that is yeah the that first winter i was foraging i actually did take some uh because i was i wasn't intending to eat them but i kind of thought they might be an okie so i was like oh i'll grab some of these and take them home and then i did the spork rant and they were definitely gallery and marginata so that yep. shook me up a little bit too just because i was like oh they you know but it wasn't like I had the intention of eating them. They weren't going into the frying pan. I took them because right. I was like, this might be a Noki. It was not. Oh. Nice. Yeah. Um, so so talk to me a little bit about because again, you are you seem to be 
isolated on purpose. This is your thing. This is a thing you do for you. There doesn't seem to be, I mean, you can correct me if I'm wrong. There doesn't seem to be a strong desire to go hang out with a hundred people and roam around the woods looking for mushrooms. Mm -hmm. So I think this is interesting. And I think I can ask you different questions. Like I was going to ask you who your Myco mentor was. Obviously not anyone face to face, but was there anyone, I mean, and I know the Audubon book sounds like maybe that was your first mentor. Um, since then, is there anybody you talk to? Is there anybody you've made friends with on an ID group? Are you truly, this is like the solo thing that you do? Yeah, I, I was involved in my scene of media for a little bit, so I still kind of keep up with those guys. Nice. But not not so much we're really like chatting about mushrooms every day we just kind of chit chat a little bit um i will say that jeremy from Wild ontario mushrooms and sharon porter they were very welcoming once i started posting videos um jeremy was like my my biggest fan from nice. the get-go and he kind of got me in contact with some of his other mushroom friends um yeah he posts really great videos jaren's great I, I'm doing a really bad job of being an admin on one of their uh, Mushroom ID groups. I just don't put it on Facebook, uh, but I tried for a few weeks. <laughs> I think that I'm with you. Really I got a Facebook time. group. I don't spend nearly enough time in it. I got oh, a yeah. Discord group. I don't spend enough <laughs> they time. They get me worked up a little bit yeah. Uh, yeah. more than I'd like to admit. I, I just see the same mushroom like 500 times. I'm like, you guys could just look yeah. at the two posts before you and figure that out. But yeah. I know that, you know, when you're a beginner. But it is nice. I'll tell you what it is good for, is it lets you know what you should be looking for that week. Yes, absolutely. I do like that. I, that I started that's good. seeing uh, Chicken of the Woods posts this spring, like way earlier than normal for Kentucky. And so I started looking earlier than I normally would have. And I got, I got five this year before I had even found my first one last year. Nice. So it helps you get an early jump on the season if there's stuff out there. It does. I mean, and you got to because you got to you got to adjust your radar when you're in the mm -hmm. woods. Right. So, yes, you got to adjust what you're sort of thinking you might stumble across. Yeah. They're, they're not all just at the ground orange. instead of up in trees. Exactly. At a certain point in the season. Mm -hmm. I've done that. I've walked right by a tree and then my wife is like, hey, aren't those chicken in the woods? And I'm like, oh, I guess I should look up from time to time. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. Um. All right, so let's get into, um, let's do a little bit about Kentucky. So mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, I forage in Ohio. I've heard a lot about West Virginia. I just went to MycoFest over in central Pennsylvania. Phenomenal, highly recommend. I know Kentucky's gorgeous, um, mm -hmm. and, I, and I've been there a little bit, but I don't hear too much about uh, the foraging in Kentucky, but it's obvious from your content there's lots of mushrooms down there so tell me a little bit about um what you think maybe makes kentucky unique special like what do you love that that you find a lot of down there yeah so kentucky is interesting because where i am we have a lot of oak and that's what's really dominating our forests but if you go more towards eastern kentucky they have a lot more pine and uh conifers down there we have some eastern red cedar here, but it's not, mm -hmm. you know, there's not a lot of pine. So most of the mushrooms that I find are the ones that I really love hardwood. But if you go 100 miles towards eastern Kentucky, mm -hmm. then it's going to be a totally different landscape. Um, so it's interesting. There's not as much biodiversity as other places. Um, I, I've been to like North Carolina and Georgia recently this summer and there's just a lot a lot more yeah. variety there but what we do have is abundant i find so many chicken of the woods uh i've i've lost count already this season and then it's going to have a big resurgence in the fall lots of hen of the woods off balls everywhere tons of indigo milk caps and chanterelles so there's always plenty out there it's it's a little bit different though. There's not as much variety as other places, but there's still good options. All of the like really popular edible mushrooms you find you pretty much have, yeah. Except for porcini, that one's kind right. of a bummer. 
Got, got to like go a, a couple one. miles west, yeah, for, mm. for more of those. Um, so I'm with you. I mean, I feel like I, I have some spots. I think maybe my best hike, I found 40, 43 species in, in like a one-hour hike. I've never mm. topped that. Usually I can do 10 to 20. Um, but yeah, there there are... There are places you can find 700 species, you know, in an afternoon if, if you had enough people collecting them. Mm -hmm. um, but again, for, for your bread and butter, food to eat, things to look at. I mean, as, as long as every mushroom you find isn't unedible, I, I think you could be in a worse spot for sure. Oh, yeah. Now, you don't just do, you don't just talk about edible mushrooms. You talk about other mushrooms, and you also don't just talk about mushrooms. You talk about plants and flowers and stuff like that. How is now? You told me your first videos were kind of you hunting chanterelles and showing videos of you picking chanterelles, but you're you're branching out. No pun intended. Um, <laughs> is that just a a desire to? learn more about what you're wandering around the woods checking out uh, how it how has that evolved yeah i've really just been trying to become more well-rounded and get a better understanding of everything that's out there um i want to kind of become like a master of my region basically yes. everything natural in the area um so it started a lot with mushrooms just because that's what i was drawn to first and i thought those were the most interesting it's less risky as a beginner forager than plants because there aren't as many deadly toxic mushrooms that uh, you'll be coming across as there are plants and they're all safe to like touch so you can get up close and personal and feel them tear them apart to get a good idea of what you're foraging right get a more positive identification seeing the textures uh plants you know some of them can hurt you pretty bad even just touching them Right. So it was a little bit more intimidating, even though I had a better foundation going in with plants. Um, it was, I was just more naturally drawn and inclined to start with mushrooms. So it's just kind of spread out once I felt like I had a pretty good idea of what was in the area for mushrooms. Um, started looking at berries and nuts. That was the next thing that kind of caught my attention. And then this year has been a big focus on trees. And I think more next year, I'm going to start trying to get a better grasp on like uh, wildlife, birds, hmm. reptiles, amphibians. I found an Eastern newt recently. Actually, I've seen them a few. Oh, I think my buddy just found one of those too recently. Yeah, they're really cool. So yeah. I was like, you know, I, I, this is this is pretty neat. I need to start paying attention more to the animals in the area. Because that was kind of like a little bit farther down on my to-do list. But I just kind of want to have a good understanding of anything outside. What's what's going on in the I ecosystem. Like Get a full picture of the ecosystem around me. And I love that you're saying like, I just want to know, I just want to know about the stuff in my area. Because mm -hmm. a lot of people, I think when they, yes. That's where you got to start. That's where, yeah. I mean, I can't go hiking in the Pacific Northwest every day unless I move there. And I'm not moving there, so I'm probably never going to be the expert of all those mushrooms. All I can be the expert of are the ones down the road at the place I go hiking all the time. That's mm -hmm. definitely the place to start. So I think that's a cool message to give people. Because people, right, again, in the age of the internet, you think you got to know everything about everything because mm -hmm. some some people, some content creators do give off the impression that they know everything about everything. Yeah. And that's not always the case, which is fine. It's still cool if you're creating great content. But for people who are not doing it, who do have a passion, do love doing these types of things, it's easy to be intimidated and think, well, where would I even start? Start in your freaking backyard. Mm -hmm. You got any mushrooms growing there? So I think that's yeah. that's a cool uh, way to go about it. Um, yeah. So what is your favorite season? Now, you've been doing this a while. You got a season that gets you the, the most excited to be out in the woods. Oh, definitely. Head of the Woods and Lion's Mane. Those are like my two favorites. And that's when I find them. I found a Lion's Mane this spring, and I was pumped about that. 
it's kind of a, a rare rare thing here. Lion's mane isn't very common. So I usually, if I'm lucky, I'll find one a season. I found two last fall and one this spring. But the nice. one that I found was massive. It was Oh, it was you awful. got me beat. I never find them bigger than about, you know, <laughs> I don't know, grapefruit, maybe a cantaloupe. Never found it was that. it was huge. I didn't weigh it. I wish I would have. Um, had no, girl, you can grow those really. too. You know, I have some logs that okay. related okay, in my cool. backyard. I did grow them off of just a substrate block, but I didn't. The first time I tried one, I was like, "Oh, this is." I waited too long to pick it. It's bad, so I threw it mm. out. And then the next time I tried it, I was like, "Oh, they just don't taste the same when they're when they're grown in your." Martha tent. That's what I have. A little different. A little different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. But Um, I did that pretty pretty good for like a year and then I kind of got out of it, started growing outside since I've got actual outside space here now. And that's where they want to be. They want to be outside anyway. Yes. So if if you can grow them outside, that's that's as long as you can keep the bugs and slugs away from them, Mm -hmm. it's all good. Um, but boy, finding a, a big old hen of the woods is pretty fun. That's oh, yeah. that's probably one of my favorites still to find. They're so goddamn big. You, mm-hmm. you come home and you don't just, it's not just what am I going to cook singular with this. It's, God, what are all the things I'm going to do with this? Like uh, yeah. how many meals can I get of this? Oh man, I can just freeze half of this. I can make jerky out of the other half. Yeah, it's it's a fun one to find for sure. Yeah. It's a little overwhelming. I I like being overwhelmed by all the all the mushrooms yeah. that I need to process. Right now, I'm, my whole kitchen table is covered in produce from my garden, and I'm just I'm pickling every day. Yeah, <laughs> can, you gotta tomatoes canning every day. It's um, but I like it. I, I don't like to be stagnant. I like now to I, something I'm a, I'm gonna tell you how uh, the old folks in my family did it. They all strategized. So you know. W- Aunt Marlene would be like, all right, so we're doing peas and squash and this. And so don't you go doing those. You do something else. So we had it all figured out every year who's going to be growing what so that Mm -hmm. we could share all that. And and we knew we were getting stuff from, you know, a few of the the relatives and and we could give them stuff and not go, oh, I don't need any zucchini. I'm I'm overwhelmed with zucchini. So you got to get you some gardening friends down there in Kentucky. Yeah, my yeah. my grandma and my dad also garden, so we haven't oh, cool. we weren't okay. as strategic about it, so we're all kind of drowning in produce right yeah, now. Yeah, y'all got but strategize, strategize. Yes, I wasn't entirely confident I was going to get anything because this was my first year, and I was doing a method that a no-till beet mulch garden, mm-hmm. and. <laughs> They had never done that before, and they were like, you're not going to get anything. Oh. Uh, but it it was good. Uh, I got a lot more than I was expecting. So I wanted to do the no-till so that hopefully mm-hmm. I can start growing mushrooms on the mulch. Uh, yep. I had a hard time finding wine cap uh, spawn this uh, this spring to inoculate the mulch. So I just like didn't get around to it. Um, there was a specific company I wanted to order it from, but they never got in stock. I could have just ordered it from somewhere else, but I was very stubborn and it came back to bite me. Okay. Yeah. yeah I was going to say, I mean, I could, I could give you some, I, I know probably 13 different people, but if you, if you, if you want to get it from somebody specific, yeah, okay, it was you got to wait. Yeah. I mean, but I should just yeah. ordered it from somebody else, but I bet I'll there's be more than just wine caps you could do this with oh, though, yeah. but but, yeah, but everybody does like those for sure. Mm-hmm. I think they're just the the guarantee. Yeah, I found that... some wild ones, and they're pretty good. So I was excited mm-hmm. to grow those. But yeah, they're not my favorite, but they're good. They're mm-hmm. big. Yeah, they're yeah. they they give you something to work with. Less work. Um, mm-hmm. man, deep mulch no till that works. Mm-hmm. I I I've had a buddy who I forget how he brought this up one day, but he knew about a a place in Northern California. And they claim they had eight, eight or nine feet of living, you know, untilled biomass that they wow. they harvested off of. They had, I forget, I think forty acres, and th- their yields annually were the equivalent of like a hundred and sixty, one hundred and seventy acre farm off That's of forty awesome. acres. So you know, yeah. I'm not surprised that worked for you. Yeah, I, it's. 
and I've got my neighbor over here. They have horses, so I got horse poop. My neighbors over there, they've got chickens and goats, so I got chicken poop, goat poop. So I got all the poops. Yeah, all the poops you need. The company came and they were cutting up uh, around the power lines. I flagged them down. I was like, "Can I please have that wood chips you got there?" (laughs) So they dumped them right where I needed them. Kind of a pain to spread everything out. Uh, That was a lot of hard work, but it was worth it. It's definitely easier to ask for it than to actually do something with it. I got a couple piles in my yard that I have not gotten around to yet either. I hear you. Um, but that's the way to get it free. And then mm-hmm. you know what it is. Um, you're like, yeah. I saw what they cut down. That's a maple yeah, tree. Great. My maple tree right there. They cut yeah. it up and dumped it. There so, you go. It was good. You're like, good it's deal. mine. Free stuff. Anything free is good. Yes. Most of the time. So I think I definitely expect to see. Now, I have seen you do your updates, your foraging updates that also include your your yields from the garden. Mm-hmm. But man, I feel like you got to do some more gardening stuff then. If you're, you know, if that's really going on, a lot of people, they can get them little patio pickers. They can just start, you know, they can start small. They don't got to go in. I think a lot of people go all in right away on the gardening, right? They go like, I'm going to do like five beds and they don't realize weeding is no fun and there's a lot of maintenance and, Mm. but yeah, let's get, get, give people a, a taste and there's nothing like, uh, I mean, you know, a zucchini, a fresh zucchini, cool. A store-bought zucchini tastes pretty good, too. I don't know if I, I'm i going to say that you absolutely got to grow your own zucchinis. But, man, some of the other stuff, berries, squash, melons, mm-hmm. freaking Tim. Oh, don't even get me started. I think I had a life-changing experience one time eating an heirloom tomato I had grown. Yeah. Huge, sliced it up. I mean, I, uh, unforgettable memory of just how insanely good that was. Yeah. They're fantastic. And Easy way to stay until... happy, right? <laughs> yeah. Easy way until to stay happy. My husband said he didn't like tomatoes. And I was like, you have not had a real tomato. Yeah. yeah. Oh, even they getting them like... little, the, the cherry tomato bushes, they just mm-hmm. keep putting out all the time. And, I mean, you just want to go up and just chew on them. You don't even got to do anything with them other than just start snacking on them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Those very sun good. Those they're fantastic. Oh, yeah. I love just cutting them in half, throwing them on a salad. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Bruschetta um, is my favorite thing in the summer. Oh, mm-hmm. it's not my favorite, but yeah, it's good. It's definitely good. Um, do you do it with the cantaloupe? You ever do that? Bruschetta Take... with cantaloupe? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're talking about bruschetta, right? Like the thin meat, the little cured no, meat? No, no, no. It's what are like, you talking about? Um, like little slices of baguette. And then you toast it. Oh, oh, sorry, bit. man. Like, yeah, I don't like speak English. I don't know. <laughs> I got confused there. I thought you were talking. What What am I thinking of? I've got some that cantaloupe called? that are about to be ripe. So maybe you're like, why is this guy putting bread on? Very good. <laughs> uh, that's funny. I got my Italian words confused. I, mean, I still don't know what I'm talking about. What is that called? Uh, prosciutto? Prosciutto. Yes. Okay. okay. That's what I meant. Sorry. It's late. I've, I think I've. I think I've driven my kids around a hundred places today. I'm trying. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so enough about Italian words. I'm <laughs> gonna continue to get wrong. Let's do. Um, I think. I think we're good with Kentucky. A couple other questions I was gonna ask. That I don't think are super necessary. So let's go back to um, foraging for a little bit. Mm-hmm. So from when you started to where you are now. Give me some of your tips and tricks. If I'm brand new and I've never foraged and you want me to know like three things for success in the woods, like Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, Savannah, I'm going to go in the woods. I've never done this and I'm going to look for stuff to eat. Give me like, it it can be more, but give me like three good tips. Yeah. The first one I would say is do not be overly ambitious like I was in the beginning because it's reckless and you can end up unalive. Um, So just make sure you know exactly what you have there, especially with plants that can hybridize. You might get a weird variety that's, you know, crossed with something. Mm. So I like to, if it's a plant, find it in that location, watch it for a full season before I forage from that area. Because you want to know what's happening there all year round. Um, if it's 
you know, normally you aren't foraging in places where they spray, but you never know if it's like along a roadside somewhere, which is, you know, eh, I don't know if you want to forage right. along roadsides or not. Some people have opinions about that, but you want to make sure there's not any herbicides or anything that could get you into, right. into trouble. So watch out for a full season if it's a plant. So now, okay, before you go on, tell me about this watch it for a full season. What oh, yeah. what happens for if I watch it for a full season? You What do I learn all that stages okay. of the plant? Mm -hmm. So especially with like I'm I'm thinking right now of daylily shoots. Uh you might see a daylily shoot and you're like perfect daylily shoots and you pick them. Well, there's a ton of like domesticated varieties of daylilies so you might end up eating some hybrid that's crossed with something that is not a true daylily and other things in the lily family are very toxic and the edibility of certain cross breeds of these daylilies is unknown so you might end up getting yourself in a bad situation there oh, you get to be a product tester okay. yeah. yeah so you want to watch it and make sure it's just a common daylily before you eat the shoots so, I mean, there's some things where it's like, obviously, if you find a black walnut, I mean, it's a black walnut, you know, it's not going to hurt you. But if it's if even the slightest bit unsure of, is this location safe? Uh, is this for sure a true 100% this plant? You know, as long as you know that, you're good. But I usually just like to wait it out and make sure I see the full life cycle of that yeah, plant I, in that area. Yeah, I never thought about that. Mm -hmm. There are trees like that, too, where certain seasons you're like i got no leaves i got i mean i can i can take some guesses from the stuff i see laying around the the base of the tree but yeah there are you know spring seeing the early flowers that that can really help you on certain things and yeah. I, I never thought about that yes i yeah. get it now so like when i so did my maple syrup it. this winter it was a little bit more difficult to identify the trees because I was looking for the buds. It's it's a little bit easier to tell the silver maple from the sugar maple, but the red maple, mm -hmm. and th that's a little different. So, you know, I was having to try to find branches that were low enough so I could see the buds on them to just, you know, confirm that this was a sugar maple. Where right now, it's like, takes me half a second to know that right. that's a sugar maple if I see one. So, um, seeing it for the full season right. is I very, get it. That makes very sense. helpful. And is it 100% necessary? Probably not. But if you're being extra safe, that's what I would recommend. Um, I had another good one that I forgot it because I was. Man, I screwed you up. I'm sorry. Okay, yeah. so yes, tips and tricks for foraging success was the question. First Wait, one. Um, okay, go. If you want to cheat a little bit, iNaturalist is fantastic. Wait a minute, uh, cheat? Why is that cheating? Oh, because come you know, on. Whatever it is. Um. Yeah, there are certain things that I look for forever, and I was like, I'm fed up. I want to find them this year. Uh, so I go on iNaturalist, and it shows you right where it is. It's Man, so convenient. I didn't know that was cheating. Yeah, I've been doing that forever. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I think it's cheating a little bit. It's not as exciting when you find it, when you know where it's at. Well, if I really want to find it, and I... Tool and I actually travel somewhere using INAT, that's usually like Murphy's Law guarantee I won't find it. So I I, I don't yeah. feel I don't feel like it's cheating quite as much. But but I hear you. Like sometimes you can see something and go, Oh yeah, I, I recognize that tree on this hike. And if I start hiking there at roughly the same time next year, you you very good likelihood of seeing that mushroom again. So but I don't know about cheating. I, I I think as long as that's not the only way you're looking for mushrooms, yeah. right? That's a, yeah. It's now, I think it's definitely more so cheating with plants because they don't really go away. They're pretty much there most of the right. time, you know. Um mushrooms oh, that's true. is more up to up to chance if you're going to see it there or not. All yeah. right. So you're right. It is more of a plant cheat than a fungus mm -hmm. cheat. Okay, that makes me feel better. Because I don't want to be a cheater, but I love using INAT to, oh, yeah, try to figure great. out where the hell do I, what's over here. I guess I don't do it hunting for a certain species. I'm more like, mm -hmm. hey, I'm going to be over here next weekend. Is there somewhere I can go hiking around there, you know, for a yeah. half hour or an hour? And then I'm just trying to see, generally speaking, are people finding mushrooms? Yeah. That's kind of how I use it. Yeah, it's good to find little pockets where there's where there's stuff going on. 
All right, I never thought about that one. I guess, like, if I found a mushroom in an industrial area, I would just never in a million years eat it. Mm -hmm. But I never thought about just thinking, like, oh, okay, you know, could could the city come through here and spray the side of the road once a year? Yeah, that's, that's yeah. Cool. That it's been on my mind lately because there's a place I like to go right along the river and forage elderberries, which I'm still planning to do this weekend. Uh, and they sprayed all along. Um the river and it's a very uh r rural area there's it's like if you know anything about but they spray like, the it that's geography. why they it's spray south of falmouth like in the middle of nowhere on these teeny tiny little roads mm -hmm. and they spray it all along the roadside there right along the licking river and i'm just like why now so check this out someone yeah. was telling me that for a very cheap if you contact a local college or university that has, you know, some chromatography, some mass specs, some some HPLC, all that kind of stuff, they they will do for pretty low cost heavy metal testing because it's like the the students want to learn how to use all these machines and and it comes up in agriculture all the time. That's like a common thing is to do a heavy metal test. You can get them done for like eight bucks a pop. So if you really just wanted to, yeah get a baseline sure. understanding yeah you check yeah. that out i I've, I've been thinking that might be fun to do for mm -hmm. some stuff our local extension too. office they do lots of different tests like that too i'm not sure if they do that one in particular but you can get your soil tested for your garden that's right. one of the things so that might be another resource there you go do some science figure it out because i mean again they might spray and might not test at all you might go, okay, well, I guess it rained that year and yeah. didn't really have that much of an effect. I, I, You really don't know what the plant's going to uptake or absorb. Some of these plants don't absorb any of that stuff mm -hmm. or hardly any of it. And then other ones might just suck it up like a sponge. You, This is all stuff that, unless it's a crop, like you just might not know. You know I don't think there's yeah. been extensive elderberry toxicity testing probably not no. so yeah. yeah you can be that scientist and figure all that stuff out that'd be fun yeah. and there there would be another short form video for you that mm -hmm. would be great um all right so let's talk a little bit about uh creating the content mm -hmm. you i feel like you do have a format talk me through like the evolution of because you you mentioned that you wanted to go from just doing posts kind of more for you to you wanted to be more generous. You wanted people to appreciate them, get something out of them. Mm -hmm. Talk me through, especially if you got some of your little marketing genius, you know, mm -hmm. tidbits that you got from school. Talk to me about how you learned to create that content. Cause it's pretty, I feel like it's pretty dialed. Like it's, it works. Every one of them, I watch every one to the end. There has never been one yet where I'm like, ah, this one's getting boring. So you're definitely doing something right. I appreciate that. Uh, a lot of it was just kind of trial and error, seeing what worked. And when I'm editing it, if I'm getting bored watching it, then I'm like, okay, uh -huh. we need to scrap this. Um, I try to go for at least a minute because I feel like if there's not a minute worth of material to talk about then it's probably not worth talking oh. about at all so and i get a lot of comments about like oh you forgot to mention this you forgot to mention this so, <laughs> it's like i can't fit everything into and you're like no video. i'm a genius you moron i did that on purpose so that you would engage with my content there are like this might be a little controversial, but on the um, sumac video, I intentionally didn't mention poison sumac because everybody knows about poison sumac. So I feel like oh, I've I've learned firsthand really about poison sumac. because yeah. every single person in the comments was going to say it. That was a little bit of a mean thing that I did to intentionally boost engagement because I knew people were going to be like, "You didn't say poison sumac," because everybody knows poison sumac. So sure, on one level, you could say it's a strategy to boost engagement. Mm -hmm. But on the flip side, I could say it made it more fun. Yeah. Because people want to 
I mean, if you can make people engage, Mm -hmm. you did something right. Yeah, they want to feel like they know more than you do. So they're well, like, sure, oh, there are those people. Know yeah. about poison sumac. I'm going to have to set the record straight here. Yeah. There's a little bit but of that's, that. But that's also great because there's something, to use like the mycelium metaphor, right? There's something cool about the way that works now where, mm-hmm. you know, sure, there are trolls and sometimes people are, oh, cool, dude, that's yeah. your little story, neat. But sometimes people will leave comments and you're like, that's amazing. Like, mm-hmm. I'm so glad you left that comment. So I I think that's great. Like, even if yeah. that's a strategy sometimes of like, yeah, I don't have to say everything because now somebody else will say it for me. Yeah, I, I feel like the, the comments are almost entirely positive, but there are some that, <laughs> you know, I hear you. yourself. But they're they're almost entirely positive, which I've been very grateful for. That's good. Now, I noticed something you did. um, I always feel like at the end, you're trying to hit a specific amount of time. Because sometimes I hear you like rushing a statement at the end. And at first I'm like, oh, that's kind of odd. But then after a while, I was like, oh, it's kind of like charming. It's like cool. Because there's always a little... I don't know if awkward is the right word, but it's it's a little <laughs> less like really natural, mm-hmm. but somehow it becomes like a thing I look forward to at the end of the, the video of like, what's the little end part going to be? Yeah, that's How... me running out of footage. Okay. Trying to get the last little bit out. It was really bad on that uh, El Stoma video where I was, <laughs> I had to put the video I had one teeny tiny little snippet of the older one and I had to put it in slow motion and like mm-hmm. talk as fast as I could to get that last little bit out. Uh, when it's something, so I'll do this a lot. I'll start editing the video and I'll realize like I don't have nearly enough footage mm. when I'm actually taking the videos. It feels like I'm recording for hours and I'll come home and I'm like 30 seconds of right. footage <laughs> that's usable. Yeah. Uh, so I'll like sit on that, and then when I can go out again, that's why in some of the videos you'll see me like four different outfits. Because <laughs> I don't, I don't even outfit. notice that. So yeah. that I don't think that even matters. Um, because yeah. again, most of the time you have your face framed mm-hmm. more prominently. It'll be like um, I'm wearing the my blue bandana, and then I have my pink bucket hat, and then I've got my green bandana. I guess I have noticed that a couple times. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. but I it doesn't because because I don't know. Maybe it's because I make stuff too. I'm just thinking like, oh, she did this this time. And oh, wow. Oh, she had to actually probably have four or five foraging moments to to comprise this quality piece of yeah, one minute content. It's definitely gotten a lot easier this year because I've I used to, which was terrible. I would just record on TikTok and edit on TikTok. And then all of that footage is like lost to TikTok forever. I don't have right. it in my camera roll. And anytime you try to download something, it's got the watermark on it. Right. So if in like a last resort, I'll do that and have to just like zoom in to avoid the watermark. Right. But I've got like the backlog now from a couple of years of stuff. So like I posted the uh-huh. last video was the fall like what to look for in fall and that was all from last year or the year before so you can kind of get ahead of the season a little bit now that i have that backlog so now do you because so i'll give you an example anna McHugh, she her videos are and i admire this about her she goes okay i found a couple amanitas i'm gonna plop down here on the ground sit on some leaf litter i'm gonna put the camera in front of me and i'm gonna talk for However long until I don't until I say all the things I know about these mushrooms, and then that's the video. I fucking love that. But also, it's less crafted. It's crafted verbally in in what she's deciding to say. But I'm just thinking for you, you're out foraging, and I've seen videos where I know multiple hikes, footage Mm -hmm. from multiple hikes had to had to go into making this one very short video. Yeah. Um, do you like, do you assign yourself these little projects of like, oh, okay, I got a, a black staining polypore video idea and this is the footage I have so far. This is what I need yet. Like, do you kind of work out shooting 
shot lists in your head or are you do you have like a methodology when you're foraging for what you find um, for that i'm just curious like how you I'm, go about that no i just kind of it's all very spur of the moment and if i find something sometimes i'll have an idea of what i want to do uh so very rarely do i have an idea of what i want to do i knew like with the sumac video that sumac was coming in this season so i kind of had some time to think about that one plan it out a lot of times i will stumble upon something and i will just say what i can think of in the moment and talk about it live and then just take footage which i'm terrible at i always think i have so much more footage than i actually oh, do. no it's got I you get... gotta it's so tedious you yeah, yeah you have to really I... mm-hmm the b-roll it's hard to I do i'm excited i want to grab it i want to do a little happy dance and i don't want to <laughs> take a bunch of photos like i'll i'll be like i got so many good photos i can put it on iNaturalist and i'll be like i've got a three second clip and it's blurry the whole time <laughs> so yeah. yeah i yeah it's so it's, it's, very it's interesting so that your your editing skills are like you're you're learning how to truly edit well then because editors can save a lot not of really set myself up well, that's for sure. <laughs> but no, I'm telling you, I worked in Hollywood. There are directors that have shelves of Academy Awards, and it's because of their editor. Their mm -hmm. editor makes them look real good. So you're, I mean, you're challenging yourself creatively. Then if you <laughs> if you're not like hyper planning everything out, you're somehow figuring out how to make what you have into something cohesive um that feels right and i'm telling you you're doing it they they all i've never watched one where i was like uh she should have spent more time on that or this part was awkward or whatever minus the endings which i love when they feel slightly awkward that's I, i'm gonna stand by that word but i mean that in a kind way um, i kind of figure that um like i look at how many people view my video all the way through and it's like very low most people swipe away within the first second what uh so i'm like yeah nobody's watching till the end anyways i don't need to come up with a good ending <laughs> oh, i'm the only guy watching till the end Holy it's usually crap. on a good video we'll get like 30 percent we'll watch till the end most of my videos is about between five and ten percent of people will watch it all the way through yeah i do i do have that problem like all my all my podcasts are two to five hours long mm -hmm. usually sometimes what i'm I, i'm trying to get better at the one hour mark we're literally almost or we're at it right now yeah but uh, um half hour that's that's the average watch time in one my one sitting usually about 20 seconds well th but you don't have yeah. a five hour podcast so you don't, you're you're doing good uh, so you're getting it's similar to mine then that that must just be like people watch a percentage of it unless you really pine over crafting the video better like you know with all these youtube content creators it's just like and stay tuned afterwards and i'll reveal the real secret to such and such, right like they yeah. really plot out how to keep you there they plot out when they're going to do their ads all that stuff and i'm like god that's great i wish i didn't have three kids and a wife and i would totally do all those things but i just don't have time to do that yeah my strategy is kind of get all the really important top layer information yeah. get a good hook in the first half of the video and then for the people that are really interested in what i'm talking about i'll kind of do some of the deeper information in the second half uh, for that you do do that yes <laughs> yes that is good yeah and what i really like about i'm gonna tell you right now you're just not coming at it with all the latin names you're not coming at mm -hmm. it just being boring out of the gate you're you're really coming at it the way someone might encounter that species on a hike right mm -hmm. and and so it it does bring people it does bring people in i think in a more organic way rather than trying to be like super clever about something or yeah, having some would, perfect shot. I would never remember a Latin name the first time I heard it, but it's easy to remember slimy puff ball. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, by the way, guys, if you, <laughs> you only watch one video, she, and I've, I actually never tried to puff these. I didn't even know they did this. Oh, it's, um, it's an awesome puff. I, but you got me, I used to, I mean, 
Yes, I've just I've neglected them because of their sliminess. I have ignored mm -hmm. them. But your video, I was like, oh, she's really she's getting comfortable now because she's mining the content in a very organic way. Um, she got a hilarious video. You guys got to watch it. It's it's a newer one, right? It's pretty new. Yeah, it's it's OK. It's the top. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty funny. That that was that was good. I mean, I don't know if all mushrooms are hilarious or have comedic material <laughs> buried within them, but uh, yeah, that that was good. I I'm watching a video like that, and then I'm watching like you talking about your lobster mushrooms that you find in the area, and you know, noticing that they tend to be morphologically smaller than some of the others in other regions, mm -hmm. and like just real, you know, careful observations. You're not like trying to make a big massive statement but you're like yeah it seems like maybe this is a different russia law that 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 it infects and so you're you know you're still giving people a glimpse at how you are thinking about all this stuff whether it's in a comical way or um you know a little more scientific a little more paying attention carefully to what's going on but that's really how you're going to get people to want to keep watching these videos right is having a bit of that variety. So yeah. I think you were very organic. And that this day and age in the the era of everybody drops 100K on a studio and has like really slick content. And then they have a team of 40 people who are doing all the work. And so it's so slick, but it has like no soul. Mm -hmm. I think, yes. So probably yeah. if you ever decided to storyboard it all out or have programming meetings deciding like these are the seven videos i'm doing in the next two weeks it would probably lose that organic feel so hopefully you never do that. yeah no i'm i'm thrifty to a fault so nice I... <laughs> so you're I, like uh, don't worry dude that's nothing. never gonna happen yeah no, i'm not I, doing I that i have the, the budget iphone the se that i got many years ago and um they don't have the, any ring lights or microphones or anything so it all works it all works I did just fine cut. <laughs> but cap cut's good mm -hmm. cap cut is legit man i watched a guy on a plane one day he was working cap cut like he was a concert pianist and mm -hmm. i finally leaned over to him at, and he was editing some presentation together it looked like it looked like maybe he was a teacher and i was like dude, like, are you a video editor? And he goes, no, I'm a college professor. And I'm like, you're really good at CapCut. He's like, oh, yeah, it's like my hobby. I love just, he's like, I got my phone. I film all the stuff. I edit videos together. It's like my new little hobby is editing. Mm -hmm. It's like not my hobby, but it's it was really cool to see how underutilized I was with, with CapCut. I am not. Yeah, it can do a lot. Except sometimes it like will trick me into using a pro feature, and I don't realize it, and I'm uh, not gonna pay for pro. I've just got the basic version, so then I'll have to re-edit the whole video because I can't figure out which pro feature I. Use. Oh, what they do it like that? They won't even just tell you what thing yeah. you gotta undo. I had a oh. trial for a week or two, so I had the captions, but uh, that that expired. So probably no more All captions right. on my videos. Man, but you got like what you got on your Instagram like forty. You got you make me look pathetic. You got like forty some. How many? Sorry, I'm looking this up right now. You got forty two thousand followers. Man, you got don't you got some product endorsements you can do or something like that? You got a no. Um, I that's a lot awesome. of followers i got a, a pair of free boots i made a little video oh. with my free boots uh, nice. and i got a, a cookbook which is a really great cookbook and i really need to make a video about it uh, but a lot of it is for west coast so i'm trying to you know it still has some stuff that's applicable it was mm -hmm. maria fenn's book it's like uh forage gather feast i think his name of it Really great. I, I yeah. keep meaning to post about it, but it's just like, you know, one of those things that I keep meaning to do. But no, nobody is nobody wants to work with me. Um, Isn't that crazy? I mean, trust me, I can relate to you. But uh, yeah, it's all good. I don't know. Maybe uh, 
if only we just did something more broadly appealing, right? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, I yeah. don't know, like just basketball reaction videos or, <laughs> yeah, like. To be fair, I have not reached out to anybody, so I could maybe get some some work if I if I needed to, but. I mean, you're not, th those are big numbers, 42,000. And I don't know how long you've had Instagram. I don't think it's even a year. Uh, I started in the spring of 2023. So it's been a little over a year. Yeah, a little I over a year. didn't do much for all of 2023. Maybe just towards like the end. I really, it really started kicking off with my maple syrup videos this winter. See, mm -hmm. See it just takes one. Yep. Yeah. I, maple syrup. There it is. Sugar. That's what did it. You just sweetened the pot a little bit and everybody yeah, was on it's, board. It's easy for people to grasp. Like everybody is, everybody's eating maple syrup. Right. And I was really shocked at how many people didn't know how or where it came from. Or um, how freaking hard it is to make. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That, oh. that was quite, you have to. I mean, I would have yeah, talked you out of it if I knew day. you were yeah oh yeah. yeah every day you can't let it sit or it'll spoil yeah and uh you gotta have somewhere to store the, the sap until you oh. boil it down or you gotta boil it every day it'll spoil like milk if you let it sit out so if you're lucky it'll the weather will be below 40 degrees if it's below 40 degrees though the trees aren't gonna run so you're not gonna get anything but that's one day you don't have to check the buckets <laughs> it's exactly it's very labor intensive for oh yeah Oh, very little reward. I even just one watch time. one YouTube video about how it's made and you will never complain about how much maple syrup costs mm -hmm. again. I was like, yeah. I'd have to charge $100 for a jar to Minimum. make this selling. Minimum. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I got and I got now uh, it's like it's so hard for me to eat it because <laughs> well, you just want to cherish it. it. $100 of work, you know, how am I <laughs> supposed to eat this? Uh, but I am. I forged some wild hazelnuts a couple weeks ago that have been curing so my plan is to uh, kind of candy coat those hazelnuts oh, with the maple syrup right. yeah i like it this should be fantastic if all goes well yeah so but now then also you did multiple videos of that right of the, mm -hmm. the maple syrup it's drink like so you see so yeah yeah it's like a story you get people invested so that's mm -hmm. that's a cool that's a good little like content creator lesson for sure all I know, I got a high school friend. She lives in Maine. Um, I think she taps 100 trees a season. And she does it every year. And every year she says, I'm done. I'm never doing this again. But she lives in Maine. She's got nothing else to do. So every year she just keeps doing it. And she's like, yeah, you definitely don't do it for money. You you got to no. love the got to love the process. The one really good thing is that it kept me motivated to get outside in the winter. I I really love the beginning of winter. In December, it usually isn't too cold, and there's tons of winter oysters out. I love that time of year, and mm -hmm. I like that moderate cold, like the 40s. Yeah. Love it. I can go outside every day mm -hmm. in that. But then, like, February, end of January is when it gets, like, in the really cold, and there's it's cold. nothing growing. The oysters are yep. all done. That time of year is just kind of dreadful. But... Having the maple syrup give me a reason to get active and get outside every day made the winter much more tolerable. Nice. So I I'll do it again just for that. Yeah, I tell you what, I like to I like to ski, and I uh, I, I like to mountain bike. Those are my other ways I get out in nature. But boy, oh boy, if I didn't have skiing in the winter, I don't know. It'd be yeah. it'd be a lot rougher. It's tough. Yeah, yes. you've got a very short time frame of daylight too yes. once i get off work i'm like i have to get out now and do everything i need to do in the next hour and then it's yeah. like yeah man any if you live anywhere like where where you're at or where i'm at or where i used to live in michigan um man winter it's like holding your breath underwater you're just mm -hmm. trying to make it through you're just yeah because it's it's unpleasant it's mm -hmm. not fun nobody goes Oh, the reason I moved to the Upper Peninsula of Michigan is for the snow. <laughs> Nobody says that. Yeah, and we have fairly mild winters here, so. Oh yeah, you don't have your winter. I I've, I've been down that way. You you got it easy. Yeah. But it does get, get it gets crisp. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it get it, it still gets cold down there though. 
yeah when it's we we get in the negatives every once in a while and yeah. it's just the air is so dry it's like yeah. you can't hardly breathe yeah. yeah man if it's gonna be that cold i want snow so mm -hmm. so then i can do something in it but yeah, yeah. If, if it's that cold and there's no snow then i get real mad mm -hmm. no good yeah well this was fun um mm -hmm. I, I how about this tell me like i think you mentioned a little tiny bit about uh it going forward but like where's your head at going forward with content like is it going to stay short form you ever going to do longer form um you did the maple syrup. Obviously, people like being told a story. Like, tease me. What what other things might you be thinking about doing? Yeah, I I gave it a, a good effort for one video on YouTube. Um, <laughs> I got no views. Um, I that's something I've been thinking about doing, but I kind of have to totally rebrand because my my videos now are too long for the shorts and right. they're vertical for one thing right which isn't very youtube friendly so i have to kind of like adjust my thinking it's definitely something that i've been toggling uh with going back and forth on this i want to like fully do this because being realistic i'm having trouble keeping up with just three videos a week on tiktok short form right uh but i feel like maybe I'll get comfortable to where I can commit to one video a week on YouTube. It's something I don't, you don't I'm even have to do to it yet, but you don't have to do about. a video a week. I'm going to tell you mm -hmm. right now, the new, I believe this, this is what they're talking about. It used to be consistency. You got to have at least a video a week. You need a great video. Yeah. Ma take I your time. I don't like don't be in a hurry make one yeah. great video if you gotta wait another two months for another great video it's okay because you already have a big instagram and tiktok following so you you can really view the beginning of that youtube channel as just a way of creating that which you can't create on tiktok or instagram right mm -hmm. tell a longer story yeah um, yeah if you can really figure out how to take what you learn from that maple syrup stuff and tell another story that takes some time people will they get invested in that what so whatever that is whatever journey you want to take people on um i i, I think you're it's worth thinking about for yeah. sure it's it's been on my mind a lot lately i think my biggest obstacle right now is just that everything my backlog all my videos from years prior they're all vertical and that's the biggest thing that's kept me from yeah. from doing it is I'd be starting with a blank canvas, and I did try putting out that one, and I had zero views, so that was kind of a. No, oh. don't don't be discouraged. Don't be discouraged. It takes yeah. a lot. It takes a lot of work, yeah. um, and and the growth. It's for me. I never blew up at any point in time for anything. Every follower I got on every platform was one at a time. Mm -hmm. Just very slow but it's okay you just if you're if you keep it enjoyable and you like it, it it all works out and you have some some great followings on those other two platforms i feel like there is a way you could you could make that work mm -hmm. to, to your advantage yeah. i but think you, definitely in the future that's something i'll dive into i've just been trying to get over those obstacles i think mostly yeah. just in my own head right now now so i just bought a little piece of kit that's pretty cool the dgi osmo pocket three no i didn't get given it for free i had to actually pay my money for it um thanks to uh supporters and all that i was able to buy this little little fancy camera it's awesome it's 4k 60 so it's very high resolution and with the press of a button you can either be vertical or horizontal so you'd have one device and you could so then you could knock off your vertical content press a button horizontal and then do yeah. whatever you're doing it's not crazy expensive and the resolution is phenomenal it, it yeah. is a really great little camera that is definitely something i'll need to look into and just trying to get in the habit like if i got in the habit of yeah. take one take two flip it 
it it really wouldn't be that much. And yeah, even like, your camera can. Yeah, your camera yeah. can totally do that. Yeah. YouTube, I feel like with that longer form content, it's not as intensive to clip it because I I have to clip 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 so much to get it down to yep. a minute. Um, I feel like it wouldn't be quite as much of a tap to edit no. it down. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I've been thinking about it lately, and I think that'll eventually be my next step. Um, See, I'm all just selfishly doing this because I just want to watch cool content from people <laughs> I, I who, whose content I like. So I'm just like, I got you here, so I'm going to try to talk you into doing some some other cool stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I think this winter will probably be a good time when I'm not having to make 40 jars of pickles a week to keep up with all. Yeah. Then you're then dinner. you're just sitting there eating the pickles as um, you're yeah figuring it all out. It's good. <laughs> Well, this was great. I uh, had a good time. Uh, definitely yeah. love to see new people just going for it and, and, and doing it and doing it well and having it all work out. I really, I didn't expect this part, but it's given me stuff to think about too. Is just this like your own zone, right? Like, Mm -hmm. I don't know. Sometimes I think, uh, I mean, I do go out foraging by myself. I'm usually with my kids um, or with other people, but I do really love those times when I have actual solitude. Yeah. And so you're, you're kind of yeah, inspiring it's, me to it's do great. a little bit more of that. I think now I'm, I'm starting to branch out more into the mycological community just a little bit. Uh, but I, I'm grateful for that time the first few years where I could really develop my own opinions and learn on my own mm -hmm. before leaning on other people yeah well yeah because then you're there's no crutches you you, mm -hmm. you figured it out yes now i i tell you what with all i mean every day it seems like there's a new mushroom festival um oh, yeah. i could easily see you, <laughs> you being a right now right now Yep. Mm -hmm. I just went to Myco Fest, Ohio Mushroom Festival's coming up, West Virginia, either just happened or is about to happen, Oklahoma, all of them. Mm -hmm. You could easily be a 4A leader. Oh, yeah. Easily um, be a 4A I leader. I got invited to tell you ride, but it was going to be pretty expensive to fly out there. Colorado's not like yeah. a, a state away from me. So, no. I, like I said, I am thrifty to a fault, so I couldn't really stomach the <laughs> the cost to get over yeah. there uh i'll be at the alabama mushroom festival though this fall oh so, you will okay I all right you get to pretty close to there so i was like hey all i gotta do is the gas I got a place to stay nice so, my friend uh alicia milliken that's that's her her mm -hmm. baby down there so I yeah cool that, uh, i watched that episode that was a good one. Oh, cool yeah yeah she's Hopefully, dude i'm i'm good. telling you what she's awesome she's great He's no nonsense. Roll up your sleeves, get it done, do it. Yep, no fronting. She, she's, she's great. I, I like her a lot. Um, well, that's cool. You are doing some of that, okay? Because I, again, I was I'm, trying I'm to tell you things you should to, do. Kind of dip my toes in the water a little bit, but uh, not, not cool. too much yet. I've got a lot. Well, local. this year, Alabama. Next year, who knows? Maybe five or six. Oh, is that? Uh, morale fest in missouri too so okay two this year maybe three next year yes we'll see what happens well yeah we'll we'll see you gotta get we gotta get you up to you're right by ohio you might as well come to the ohio mushroom festival maybe i can get vent so to um i looked into it but it's like a thursday friday kind of deal it's all weekend all weekend mm -hmm. i thought about it it's still like six hours for me because it's in the northern part so is it six it. hours from you? Yeah. If you're northern Kentucky, Cincy to it should be I'm like three an and a half. Cincy. Oh, you are still an hour. Yeah. Time. Okay. All right. So yeah, maybe it's like at least four and a half, five hours. Mm -hmm. Or or yeah. More. So I thought it's about it's not that far there. though. That's half a day. It's not that bad. Yeah. Anyway, we'll, we'll we'll I'll get you maybe we can get you four A leader going forward we'll see after okay. talking <laughs> talking somebody's ear and see what they think but i think you'd be great um people like to wander around the woods you're not the only one i'm not the only one and uh people show up to these mushroom festivals and they want to meet people who love mushrooms and got some to teach them so 
yeah yeah be cool all right well uh thank you so much and uh yeah, hopefully me. in a year once you get your youtube channel going we can talk more about all your cool yeah. content on there yeah that'll be fun all right well thank you so much and hope yeah, hope you. to see you again soon yeah have a good one all right guys that was savannah schwartz foraging kentucky uh real cool gal um i i'm learning a lot i follow her uh not for the clout, not for the hype, not because it's cool, but because I actually learned something from her 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 videos, um, and continue to to learn something from her videos, and some of her videos get me itching to get back out in the woods so bad. So thank you, Savannah, for that. Um, thank you for being an inspiring person in the Myco community. Um, that's what I like. That's what I'm looking for. If if uh if you guys know of anybody you want to see on the show, just man, you can always DM me. Just let me know about somebody. Uh, there's so many people coming into the space. There's so many people creating content. There's so many people vending. There's so many people uh, also coming out of the woodwork. People who've been growing for decades, but have done so, you know, under the cloak of uh, anonymity, uh, are, are now feeling a little bit more comfortable that they can come out and uh, talk about what they're up to. So yeah, man, put them on my radar. I'm I'm all about it. I am. My job now does not let me have quite as much free time to peruse and cruise around the Facebook groups and the discords and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, you know, I'm just I am not able to organically on my own find guests as often. So yeah, feel free to bring somebody to my attention. Um, some people do it, and it feels they're so apologetic about it like oh i don't i don't want to tell you what to do but you know check this person out yeah send me somebody what's the worst that's going to happen i'm going to look, check them out and go eh, nah not right now that's fine bring them to my attention anyway all right guys uh omdl is going to be at ohio mushroom festival i'm going to be at ohio mushroom festival happy hype going to be at my ohio mushroom festival ellen rockefeller is going to be at ohio mushroom festival all these cool people People who love mushrooms, who uh, you know are part of the community, they're going to be there. Come check them out. Come hang out with us. Just, just do that Michael life, man. Get, get into that mushroom living. You know what I mean? All right, guys. Until next week, go grow some mushrooms. Mm -hmm.